Okay, we're back with our little diagram here. And this is a gas furnace. And we're going to sequence something that's quite a bit tougher this time. This one's going to be a little more complicated than just a fan energizing a fan. This one's actually going to energize the gas to start this thing uh, on a cycle of heat. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to look at this diagram a little closer again because this is our sequencing diagram here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go into this low voltage circuit here. We're going to go from R to W as in a thermostat closing on a call for heat. So power passes from R to W. Then it goes up here to PS, which is a pressure switch. Pressure switch is a single pole, double throw switch. Goes to the normally closed contacts of the pressure switch to common, then down to 7 to energize CR, which is combustion relay, through the common side of the transformer. Now I've, at this point, I have energized that relay. Now, there's more than one thing that's going to happen here. If I look here, this is CR. So there's a normally open switch between 3 and 5. That switch is going to close. Now that's going to supply power through 3 and 5 to keep CR energized when this pressure switch changes position. Now it hasn't started to change position yet. Let's see if we can figure out what it's going to do. Okay, if we look through the rest of this diagram, we notice in the high voltage, this is in the high voltage here, we have another CR. Okay, it's a single pole, double throw switch. The power is going to pass through four, and then when CR is energized, it's going to pass through six, and then it energizes the combustion blower. Okay, that is going to make this pressure switch change positions. It's going to go from the normally closed position to the normally open position. It'll close to the normally open position. Power will pass through. It's not going to pass through here anymore because this switch is open, but we have a holding circuit right here on CR. So power is going to pass from W to 3, 5, up to C, to the normally open set of contacts through FL. Uh-oh, what's FL? Now that brings us up another little issue. We got CR, that was combustion relay, but what's FL? Now there's no key down here. It's not telling us anything. Usually there's a key on most of these diagrams, but this one doesn't have it. So I'm going to have to find out what FL is. So let's look over here. I got an idea because uh, FL could be on the limit. Well, okay, there, here we are. This is FL right here. Okay, that's a normally closed switch. This is a normally closed switch. It's a switch that's activated by temperature. That is the limit switch. So it's going to pass through the normally closed limit switch. Then it's going to go to TH on this ignition control. Now ignition controls we can't actually sequence because they're electronic and they do all sorts of things on timers and the like. Well, we have to understand what that ignition control is going to do. So, at this point, 
we're going to say this power passes through to TH, energizes the control, and begins the ignition sequence. Now the first thing it's going to do, first thing in the sequence it's going to do, is it's going to pass power through IGN to the hot surface igniter. Okay, that's what that is right there. Power then passes through the hot surface igniter to the neutral line, so it's energized. Now this is going to be energized for a time period uh, to allow it to warm up. Then we're going to have a trial for ignition. MV, MV, that's main valve, main valve, and that's the gas valve. It's going to energize the gas valve, but look, we got something else here. And of course, it doesn't really tell us, you know, it's kind of hard to read this thing. Uh, diagrams are this way. They uh, have a lot of things that are not easy to read. But if we go over here again, we have a, another little doohickey that says it's a primary rollout limit. Now it doesn't show anything in this diagram about what it is, whether it's a heat operator or not. But if we look back over here, we'll see that is a heat operated switch. And that's actually a rollout switch. If flame rolled out the front of the furnace, then this switch would open. And it's usually a manual reset switch. This kind of looks like it might be with this little part here, but it's pretty hard to tell. But anyway, if that is closed, the power through MV and MV will energize the gas valve. Now, once the gas valve is energized, the flame should come on. Then there's a flame proving circuit right here. There's a flame sensor uh, that it senses whether we have actually produced flame. Let's say it does sense we have produced flame. The gas valve will continue to stay on. If this did not sense flame, it would shut off after four to seven seconds. But let's say it went ahead and started. Now our burners are running now because this ignition control has done all of its due diligence to make sure everything works properly. Is there anything else that's going to happen when this burner comes on? Well, there is. And so we're going to go down here and we're going to look, okay, there's FC. Now what's FC? Again, we go back over here, and on the fan and limit control, there's an FC. Now, that's a normally open heat-operated switch. If we look how this is wired, then when this closes, because of the burner is on and has warmed up the heat exchanger, that's going to close and then power is going to pass through here and energize uh, whichever speed we have hooked up. This is kind of hard to see how, how this is set up, but it's, it's, you can set it for different speeds. So once FC closes, power passes through the normally closed relay on the fan relay. By the way, that's right here. and energizes the fan. Now at this point, you've completed the cycle. Everything is working as it should. Now there's one other thing that's going on here. And let's see if we can figure out what it is. Right here, we had a normally set of, close set of contacts, didn't we? Now they weren't really doing anything because FC wasn't closed. But if FC was closed and the burner is on, CR would have changed position. So this doesn't go anyplace, does it? But what if 
the cycle has finished, W is de-energized, so CR is de-energized. So this goes back to its original position with a close from 2 to 6. So if the fan switch, that's FC, if it's closed and W is de-energized, power will also pass through 2 to 6 and keep the combustion blower energized. Now, that's a little odd duck. I mean, you don't see this much, but, uh, but I have seen it before. So, we've completed sequencing this diagram on a call for heat. But remember, when we're sequencing something like this, we need to look for things like this. What is this? What does it do? Uh, if for some reason there was something that wasn't working properly, you would want to look at all these different things to try to figure out where they should go. I would spend a little bit of time with this diagram here because I think it's worth it to, to spend the time with it so that you understand especially how this operates here with the pressure switch and its interface with the ignition control. In order to understand this diagram, you do have to understand how ignition controls work because there's no internal uh, connections shown in this diagram. And you'll find that in most electronic parts. They don't show anything inside. They, they just show a box. So anyway, that's it on this one.